All right, let's talk about stats in Elden Ring. There are a lot of numbers in this game, and it's kind of overwhelming. In this video, we're going to be looking at the status page, and I'm just going to be running through what all of this nonsense means. First, and maybe most importantly, you can click the help button at the bottom of the screen, whatever that may be on your platform, and hit explanation, which will let you go through every line on this page and get a short description of what all these things are that you can refer back to at any time if you forget. A lot of these are pretty straightforward, um, but some could definitely use some more explanation, so that's what this video will be about, and hopefully between whatever you learn in this video and uh, whatever reminder you can get from looking at these explanations in your own game, you'll be able to know what all these things are. Before we start, there will be two parts to this video. The first part, I'm just going to run through everything on this page and explain what it is and how it works. Then in the second part, we'll talk about how leveling up actually affects these stats and get into soft caps and all that fun stuff. If you're not completely new to the game and you feel comfortable with everything on this page already and you just want soft caps explained, I'll have chapters set up in the video so you can just skip ahead if you want to. But yeah, let's get started. So first, your level starting off strong with a slightly poorly worded explanation. So this is essentially just the number of times you leveled up. Most classes don't technically start at level one. So if you want to be particular about it, then it's how many times you leveled up plus five to 10 levels, however many you started with. But the important thing to know is it's not really a good indicator of power since it's not affected by how efficiently you're increasing your attributes or how well your gear and stats are synergizing, which is going to determine how strong you actually are. You should also know that enemies in Elden Ring have a static difficulty. They do not scale to your level. So if you skip an area and come back to it later, the enemies won't be any stronger than they were before. That coupled with the fact that not everyone will encounter areas and bosses at the same time in their playthroughs due to the open world nature of the game means that there's no real minimum level requirement to do anything. So unless you're trying to min-max your character and need it to be a specific level for whatever reason, maybe to fit into a PvP meta or stay around the same level as your friends or something, honestly you can just feel free to ignore this number. Runes held, runes needed, pretty self-explanatory, I don't have anything to add. Next we have attribute points, and attributes are the things that you actually choose to level up, and how you allocate these points determines your character's build, a term you'll hear thrown around quite a bit when it comes to stats. And how effectively you allocate these points is where your overall power really comes from. There are eight of them, and I would argue that each has a primary and a secondary function or a few secondary effects. You can see that when you hover over these with the explanation window open. It tells you what the attribute does, and then it says it also does something else. For example, leveling vigor will increase your health primarily, but it also happens to increase your fire resistance for whatever reason. Is anyone leveling Vigor to increase their fire resistance? No, absolutely not. Now most of these secondary effects relate to defense and resistances, which as you can see on the far right of this page will come up later in this video. So for now, to keep things simple, let's just run through these and just talk about their primary main purpose. Now these first three attributes, Vigor, Mind, and Endurance, will primarily influence some of your base stats that you can see here in the middle column. So Vigor primarily governs your HP, health, life, whatever term you want to use. Mind governs your FP or focus points, which is the resource you use to cast spells and use abilities. Most games just call it mana or something similar. And endurance governs your stamina, which gets consumed when you do things like sprint, attack, block, roll, etc. And it also increases your max equip load. Now for the rest of these, I'm going to disagree with how the game words these explanations a little bit. So, first of all, it says that strength is the attribute required to wield heavy armaments. That would be like the main thing based on this, the way they've been structuring these explanations. And then it says it also boosts attack power of strength scaling armaments and affects your physical defense. The way this is worded in that boosting attack power is in that secondary also does this section makes it sound like boosting the attack power of strength scaling armaments is just like a side benefit. But it's actually critically important, and I would definitely lump that in as part of the primary function of the strength attribute. But anyway, what this is saying is that you need a certain amount of strength to wield certain weapons, so your strength level is going to determine which weapons you can or can't wield, 
and it will also affect how much extra damage your weapon does if it scales with strength. I have another video explaining weapons and weapon scaling in depth that I would definitely recommend checking out if you don't know how scaling works. Next we have dexterity, again primary function is determining which weapons you can wield and how much extra damage you'll get if the weapon scales with dexterity. Intelligence determines what sorceries you can use and boosts the power of those intelligence scaling sorceries. It doesn't say it here, but certain weapons will also have a minimum intelligence requirement, just like strength and dexterity, um, to actually wield them. Faith determines which incantations you can use. It'll boost the power of those faith scaling incantations. And again, it's going to determine which weapons you can wield as some of them will have a faith requirement. Finally, we have Arcane, which will determine whether you can use certain sorceries, incantations, and weapons if they have an Arcane requirement, as well as boost their power if they happen to scale with Arcane. It also boosts your Discovery stat, which is kind of nice. Now I have a lot more to say about those last five attributes a little later in the video, but like I said at the beginning, I want to start by just giving a general overview of everything on this page first, so we'll come back to that in a moment. On to the base stats section then if I can get to it. Okay, so like I just said, HP keeps you alive, FP lets you do magic stuff, and stamina lets you do physical stuff. Pretty straightforward. Equip load shows the total weight of the gear you have equipped out of the maximum weight of all the gear you can equip before you can't roll or sprint anymore. The closer you get to your max equip load, the slower your character will move. The percentage of your max equip load that you're using will also determine which rolling animation your character uses when they dodge, which is not purely an aesthetic difference. It actually affects how many iframes you get when you roll, and how long it takes to recover before you can roll or do any other action again. If you don't know what iframes are, it's short for invincibility frames. If you were to record your character rolling and play it back in slow motion, frame by frame, during a number of those frames, your character is completely invincible. So naturally, a big part of this game is learning to time your rolls so that the enemy makes contact with you during those iframes, because then you won't take any damage. Toward the end of the rolling animation, you'll transition to recovery frames, which are where you're not invincible anymore, but you're still stuck finishing the current rolling animation, and you obviously won't be able to perform any other actions until you finish the roll and stand back up. If you're using less than 30% of your max equip load, that'll put you at a light load and that translates to a fast roll with 13 iframes and 8 recovery frames. You also roll farther and backstep faster. And these numbers are in terms of running the game at 30 FPS. So 13 iframes plus 8 recovery frames is 21 frames in total, which would be roughly two thirds of a second for the whole rolling animation to play out if you're running the game at 30 frames per second. Now using 30 to 69.9%, just anything under 70, um, of your equip load, of your max equip load, puts you at a medium load and translates to a medium roll, which also has 13 iframes and 8 recovery frames, but you won't roll quite as far and back steps will be a little slower as compared to the light load. Between 70 and 99.9% .9 of your max equip load, that'll translate to a heavy load and a slow roll which only has 12 iframes instead of 13, and a whole 16 recovery frames, double the 8 recovery frames of the other two rolling animations. You're not going to roll as far either, and stamina regen is about 20% slower. Finally, if you exceed the max equip load, you won't be able to roll or backstep whatsoever, and you will move much, much slower. So I think it goes without saying, as long as you're in the light to medium range, you're pretty much chilling. Poise is another fun one, this determines how resistant you are to flinching or getting staggered by an attack. Poise is actually based on your armor and not affected by leveling any attributes. To explain how this stat works, imagine a separate invisible HP bar just called Poise that just floats above the head of yourself and every enemy in the game. And the size of it is of course just however much poise you have. Every attack from any source in the game will do a certain amount of poise damage and when your poise HP bar hits zero, you'll get staggered. Same thing applies to you attacking enemies. You have poise to worry about, and they have poise to worry about. Now any combination of weapon and attack has its own intrinsic poise damage value, whether that be a light attack from a dagger, a running attack with an axe, a jumping attack with a greatsword, they're all going to do a certain amount of poise damage. You can't see what that amount of poise damage is in game, 
but it's not really hard to guess. If you're wearing armor, a little poke from a dagger probably isn't going to affect you much, but everyone is folding under a big jumping attack from a greatsword, right? So let's say, for example, you get hit by a light attack from a dagger and it does 41 poise damage, but your armor is giving you 60 poise. You'll take damage, but your character won't physically react to the attack, no flinching whatsoever. Because your 60 poise covers the 41 poise damage hit you just took. Now since every possible type of attack has its own amount of poise damage, you'll need a different minimum amount of poise to resist every type of attack in the game. For any build, I'd recommend at least 51 poise, as that is the threshold to withstand a standard light attack, which is by far the most common attack in the game. Anyway, after a bit of time, your poise or your enemy's poise will start to recover, it only takes a few seconds, but if you attack consistently, you can stack poise damage before the poise bar has a chance to regenerate. So again, if I have 60 poise but I get hit twice in a row with a 41 poise damage attack, I'll resist the first attack because 41 is less than 60, but it only leaves me with 19 more poise, so the second attack will bring my poise HP bar below zero, which means the second attack would stagger me. The good news is there's no overflow. After my poise threshold gets broken, I'll just instantly reset to 60 again, or however much poise I have and it will take at least 60 more poise damage from that moment onward to stagger me a second time. So in this example where I'm getting hit by a 41 poise damage attack, it'll take two more hits to stagger me again. On the other hand, if you have little to no poise, you can easily get stun locked if the enemy is continuously attacking you, because you don't have enough poise to resist even one hit like I did in the previous example. This is kind of an abstract concept since you can't see the poise HP bar in game, but hopefully that made some sense. The important thing to know is that having more poise means you can resist flinching from more attacks, and just remember that wearing a combination of armor that gives you at least 51 poise will be very helpful. That's the magic number, most common breakpoint, but the more you have the better. You can probably see how this sort of plays inversely with equip load. The more armor you have, the more equip load you're going to have because it's going to be heavier, and that might slow down your roll. But in exchange for having a slower roll, you'll be able to resist more attacks. Then on the other hand, you can lower the amount of armor you're wearing, which will lower the amount of poise you have and how resistant you are to flinching, but you might get a faster roll, which is going to make it easier to dodge attacks, so you won't be getting hit at all. Discovery is a multiplier that gets applied to the base drop chance of any item in the game. It's shown as 100 times higher than what actually gets used in the calculations for drop chance, so if I have 109 Discovery, the base drop chance of any item won't actually be 109 times higher than normal. It'll just be multiplied by 1.09 in this case, so a 9% increased chance for an item to drop, and this is affected by your arcane level. You also have memory slots, which are the number of slots you have available to memorize spells. As you play, you'll find sorceries and incantations all over the place, but you can only actually use the ones that you memorize while you're resting at a site of grace. You can't take all of the ones you've ever found with you at any given time. You can swap them freely anytime you rest, though. Some stronger spells will cost more than one slot, and you can increase this number by collecting items called memory stones. Unlike previous FromSoft games, it is not affected by any attributes, so the only way to get more memory slots is by finding those memory stones. And those two empty gray boxes below are my actual memory slots, which look that way because I haven't memorized anything yet. Moving on to the attack power section, these are the total attack power of each item in your right and left hands. If you go back to the equipment page, you can see what slots that these are actually translating to. If the slot is empty, it'll just show how hard you hit with your fist. That's what these random 23s are. For reference, Mike Tyson's fist is only like 26, so I'm kind of insane. Next, in the defense and damage negation section, there are two columns. The first one is the defense you're getting versus all these different damage types from your attributes, and it's a flat reduction in the amount of damage you'll take. The second column is the percent of that damage that gets negated based on your gear. So if you were to remove all your armor and talismans and you're not being buffed by anything currently, you can actually get that second column down to all zeros. When an enemy attacks you, their attack does a certain amount of base damage, and then the game's going to take that number and subtract the defense value in the left column, and then reduce that number by whatever percent of damage negation you have in the right column, and that's how much damage you'll actually end up taking when you get hit. But what do I mean when I say that the left column is your defense based on attributes? Now we can circle back to those secondary effects on the attributes I mentioned earlier. 
So physical damage versus strike versus slash and versus pierce are all affected by your strength level. Um, if I jump back over here, also boosts attack power, strength scaling armaments and affects your physical defense. Magic is going to be affected by intelligence, fire defense is affected by vigor, lightning is actually not affected by any specific attribute weirdly enough, and holy defense is affected by arcane. Finally, for resistances, you can't really see the title of the section there, resistance, there you go. The left number is once again how much resistance you're getting from your stats, while the right number is just how much you're getting from your gear. The four types of resistances are immunity, robustness, focus, and vitality, and they all translate to how resistant you are to being afflicted by different status effects. The higher the number, the more buildup it'll take to trigger the relevant status effect. This only affects to how much buildup it takes though, not how much damage it will deal after the status effect triggers, nor how long it takes for the status effect to go away. So immunity is going to be your resistance to poison and rot and is affected by leveling vigor. Robustness is your resistance to blood loss and frostbite and it's affected by endurance. Focus is your resistance to madness and sleep and it is affected by mind. And finally, vitality is your resistance to death blight and it is affected by arcane. And don't forget, you can always just check the stat explanations on this page to see which attribute affects what, so you don't have to memorize any of that. That being said, I've kind of been hinting at the fact that leveling up specific attributes for the sake of increasing these resistances is a waste of time, and that's because it is. If you want to increase them, there are consumable items, spell buffs, and talismans in the game that you can equip that will significantly boost your resistance to specific status effects or damage types while you have them equipped. And you're much better off just using those situationally when you need them, rather than desperately trying to boost these numbers by leveling certain attributes. The other thing you should be aware of is the fact that every time you level up, no matter what attribute it is, you'll get a small increase to all of your defensive stats and resistances, but leveling up specific attributes will further increase some of them like I just explained. Basically, no matter what you level up, your character will just gradually get a bit tougher to offset the enemies in the game getting stronger as the game goes on. You can actually see this when you go to level up at any grace, so if I go ahead and rest here and choose the level up option. When I highlight an attribute, all of these stats affected by leveling it up will be glowing off to the right. You can see that endurance here will increase my stamina and max equip load, those two are highlighted, which makes sense, but all of the defensive stats are also highlighted, even though endurance should only affect robustness. Well, endurance does only affect robustness out of that list, but the actual act of leveling up in general increases all of them slightly, which is why they're all highlighted no matter which attribute you select. So essentially the point I'm getting at here is that you never have to worry about your defensive stats falling behind from not leveling them up, it'll just happen naturally. Okay, that covers everything. Now on to part two of this video. So, so far, we've covered how leveling attributes affects your stats in terms of which attributes affect which stats, but how much of a stat do you actually get when you level up? That depends on the attribute. Now, I'm going to throw a lot of information at you, but most of it you won't have to memorize. I'll condense it into the important numbers that you will actually want to remember once I'm done explaining everything. There will be a sort of summary cheat sheet later in the video. But in the meantime, I'm going to do my best to explain not only how everything works, but also why. Do you need to know all the details of the why? Definitely not. So whatever sticks, whatever you remember from this video, cool. But like I said, the important things to remember will be condensed later. To give a dumb analogy, basically my thought process here is that I, for example, could just tell you that gravity makes things go down, and realistically that's all you really need to know. But it's also cool to take like at least one physics class in your life and learn why that's true. Or in the context of this video, I could just tell you that Vigor has a soft cap at 40 and that's all you really need to remember. But I'm going to explain what that actually means so you'll know why soft caps are significant in the future. Anyway, back to the previous question, how much of a stat do you get when you level up? At certain levels, you'll notice diminishing returns from increasing an attribute. These points are called soft caps. There's a hard cap at 99 for any attribute because you can't level past 99, but every attribute has a few soft caps along the way that you want to look out for when you're leveling your character. Let's take a look at Vigor to see what I'm talking about. For Vigor, your character's total HP will increase every single time you level it, which you can see represented as that red line. That's your total health points, just keeps going up as you level your Vigor level. But how much extra HP you get depends on what level your Vigor is, and that's what these green bars are. 
Your HP will increase more and more each level from 1 to 40. At level 1 Vigor, you'll get 4 more HP from leveling up, and at 40 Vigor, you'll get 48 more HP from leveling up. There's a soft cap at 40, and you can tell by the sheer drop-off where that next level, 41, will only get you 26 more HP, a lot less than 48 HP at the level before that. Not only that, but for this particular attribute, you actually get diminishing returns from 41 to 60, from 26 HP per level at 41 down to only 13 HP per level at 60. The second soft cap then is at 60. At 61, you only get 6 HP per level, all the way down to 3 HP at 99. So for the average person, leveling Vigor up to 60 would be a good idea, but anything past 60 and you won't be getting much out of those levels. 6 extra HP added onto a 1900 health pool is not going to feel very different. So these soft caps are going to be what you use as a general guideline when making your build and leveling your character. To make sure that you get the most value you can out of every level up, you want to learn where these soft caps are for every attribute, because as you can see, going past them might not be worth the cost of runes. Now that you understand how soft caps work in general, here are the soft caps for the other attributes. It's the same exact idea, but each attribute will have slightly different breakpoints. So for mind, like I said before, leveling mind will increase your focus points or FP. You get a certain amount of focus points per level of mind, that's what these green bars are, and there are soft caps at 50 and 60. Endurance is a bit more complicated, not just because there are two separate sets of soft caps to remember, but also because it has some of the weirdest progression. Leveling up will only get you 0, 1, or 2 more stamina points depending on your level, and as you can see, it switches back and forth constantly. After level 50, you even go a few levels at a time without getting any stamina whatsoever. The main soft cap for stamina is at 50, with a minor soft cap at 30 because it slows down quite a bit after that. But in my experience, the average player will usually end up between 15 and 30 endurance anyway, and in that range, every second and third level will get you two stamina points, so stamina wise, most levels in that range will be worth the investment. To be clear, I'm not necessarily recommending having as low as 15 endurance or stopping when you get to 30 per se. It just happens to be a stat very few people prioritize and that's largely because of how small the return on investment is per level. After 30, you get two stamina points per level a lot less frequently. And after 50 endurance, you of course only get one stamina point every few levels. As for how endurance affects equip load, it's a lot more simple, just a soft cap at 25 and 60. Now in general, for most people, I honestly wouldn't recommend going too much above 30 endurance unless you're using really heavy gear and just need a little extra equip load because like I just said, the return on investment per level of endurance is just so low compared to some other attributes. There are also some items in the game that'll just directly increase the thing's endurance effects like your stamina and max equip load, or even items that increase stamina recovery speed so you can just get more mileage out of less stamina. Now every build is going to need some amount of vigor, mind, and endurance to be successful, so those are pretty much universal attributes. The rest of the attributes, however, are really going to define your character's unique strengths and playstyle because it's going to allow you to use weapons and abilities that can only be used after investing many levels into certain attributes. You'll often hear people say that they're using a strength build, or a dexterity build, or a strength faith hybrid build. And what they're referring to is which of these attributes that they're focusing their levels on, and by extension, what sort of weapons and playstyle that they're using. I hope everything up to this point made some sense, because the soft caps for the rest of the attributes get a little more complicated and involve a whole lot of what we might call, it depends. Elden Ring's wide variety of weapons, spells, and different damage types are awesome until you're trying to understand things like soft caps and scaling. The soft caps for strength, dexterity, intelligence, faith, and arcane are all dependent on how your weapon scales with those stats. In other words, you'll know which of those attributes to level up and where their soft caps are based on the weapon you're using. The degree to which your weapons scale with those attributes and even which stats it does and does not scale with are dependent on the weapon itself and its affinity. And on top of that, to make things more complex, the affinity can be changed to all kinds of different things by modifying the weapon with a wet blade. Like I said, the variety and customization is awesome, but it, it just means that there are a lot of possibilities when it comes to understanding all these numbers. For the sake of not putting too many topics in this video and making it even harder to follow, I made a separate video explaining weapon scaling and affinities, which I recommend you check out before we get to the rest of this one. They seem completely different, hence why I made two separate videos, 
but they really go hand in hand and you can't fully understand one without the other. I linked it in the description and it should also pop up in the corner of this video if I remembered to do that. So pause here, watch that, it's going to teach you everything you need to know about weapons and scaling, and then come back. Now then, assuming you did that, welcome back and let's get to the rest of these soft caps. Before I go any further, the charts I'm about to show were posted by a Reddit user by the name of Sleepless Sheeple in the same style as the previous charts I just showed you that came from the Elden Ring wiki, which makes them nice and easy to follow. If you want to really dig deep into all of this and see the data behind it and get a more in-depth explanation of everything in this video, I linked their work in the description and I highly recommend checking it out, but if that's not your thing, I'm going to do my best to explain it here. I also took the liberty of inverting the colors because the original backgrounds for all these graphics were white and I'm kind of a dark mode enthusiast. No need to thank me. So I just told you that the soft caps for these attributes are going to depend on what weapon you're using and of course the thing that sets weapons apart from one another are their affinities and the types of damage that they do. There are separate soft caps for 8 different cases based on the damage type and affinity of a weapon. And those eight cases cover just about any type of weapon in the game, including catalysts, which means this information will apply to you if you have a more spell casting playstyle as well. There are a few very specific weird exceptions like arcane scaling on certain throwing pots or the serpent bow having its own unique scaling curve, but I'll let you look through the reddit posts in the description if you're interested in the weird stuff. This video will cover the other 99.9% .9 of scenarios and weapons in the game. So, first we have weapons that do physical damage and have no infusion, also known as good old fashioned regular default weapons. These are weapons that have not been infused with a new affinity, which of course would also cover any unique weapons that are reinforced with somber smithing stones, because they cannot be infused, so by default they would just count as a no infusion weapon. There's one exception to that that I'll talk about in a moment, but let's just keep going for now. This curve applies to any no infusion weapon that does any physical damage at all. It doesn't have to do exclusively physical damage. It could be a weapon that does physical damage and lightning damage, but that weapon does do physical damage, and the way that that physical damage scales is represented by this curve. There's another case which we'll get to in a moment that shows the soft caps for any non-physical damage type like fire, magic, lightning, etc. So yes, the different damage types scale differently and you'll have different soft caps for different stats if your weapon deals multiple types of damage. It's confusing, I know, I'm sorry, just bear with me. So for any weapon that falls into this category, again, this category is any weapon that has not been infused with affinities and it deals any physical damage at all. Simply check in game to see what stats your weapon scales with, and the soft caps then for those stats will be at 18, 58, and 80. And you can see the yellow bars, which is the amount of extra scaling you get at each level up, drop off at those soft caps. I want to dive a bit deeper into this first case to make sure this makes sense before we move on to the rest of the cases, so let's look at an example with an AR calculator. Let's use the same setup I have in my walkthrough, a samurai with the Uchi Katana. And I'm going to go ahead and max out the upgrade level because it'll make all the numbers bigger so increases in damage will be a bit clearer and the affinity of course will just be standard since this is the no infusion case, no special affinities. Now you can see on the right that this is only doing physical damage, uh, blood is a status effect so that doesn't count, but we're doing 350 physical damage in total which is the sum of 281 base damage, that's coming from upgrading this weapon to plus 25 plus 68 damage from scaling with our stats. Now this video is of course about stats and stat scaling, so that 68 is what we're focusing on. So a no infusion weapon's physical attack power should follow the curve I just showed, with soft caps at 18, around 58, and 80. Let's test that out. So first you want to do what I just said a minute ago and check to see what stats your weapon actually scales with. For the Uchi Katana, that's going to be Strength and Dexterity, which means that leveling Intelligence, Faith, or Arcane, even if we sent them all the way to 99, will not affect our damage on this weapon whatsoever. This weapon does have more Dexterity scaling than Strength, a C rating as opposed to D, but the soft caps for both are the same, you just get more damage from leveling Dexterity since it has a higher scaling grade. Now right now, I'm sitting at 15 dexterity, so if I level up once, pay attention to my scaling damage, right now it's at 68, bump this up to 16, and you can see it's now at 72, plus 4 damage. If I level up again, plus 4 damage, 
level up again, plus 4 damage. Now we're sitting at 18 dexterity, which is a soft cap, so we expect the next level to have slightly diminished returns. So if I go ahead and level up to 19 and pass that soft cap, sure enough, the damage only goes up by 3 instead of 4, which is what we would expect after going over a soft cap. Let's keep going though. So from 18 almost all the way to 60, we expect to keep getting increases in damage, but the size of those increases should start trending downward the closer we get to 60. We're not going to keep getting 4 more damage every time we level up. Now if I level up to 20, we actually get plus 4 to scaling damage. Now when the game is calculating these values, not all the numbers are going to come out as whole numbers. They'll have decimals in them, but the game is only going to show us integers, whole numbers. So. We might get cases like this from time to time where the number is one more or one less than we expect it to be just due to rounding. That's fine though because if we keep going, we'll still see the same trend as the graph I just showed. So if I go ahead and level up again, we get plus 3, plus 3, plus 4, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, plus 4, and we'll probably stop seeing plus 4 soon, and if I keep going until we get to 41 dexterity across from 41 to 42 and you can see we only get plus 2 to our damage The total AR somehow went up by 3 even though the scaling damage only went up by 2 once again rounding issue But you can start to see that steady decline where we get slightly diminishing returns from each level Just like the chart says we will we were only getting damage increases by 4 originally Then mostly by 3 and now we level up and only get 2 more damage from scaling now if we continue toward 58 we're still getting around plus 2 damage per upgrade, even some plus 3s for a while, until we pass that soft cap and we start to only get plus 1 from leveling up. On the chart, you see a jump back up after level 60, and sure enough, if I start leveling up again, we'll get some more plus 2s again, until the last soft cap at 80. Once I pass 80, you're going to see I only get plus 1, and sometimes we level up and don't get any extra damage at all. So there you have it, that's how these graphs actually translate to the scaling damage on your weapon in-game. I also linked this calculator in the description, so feel free to experiment with whatever your weapon of choice is. Next we have physical attack power on weapons with a heavy, keen, or occult affinity. Remember a second ago I said the last category included all weapons upgraded with somber smithing stones, but with one exception? That exception is somber weapons whose physical damage scales with arcane. How do you know if that's your weapon? First, check if it's upgraded with somber smithing stones. Next, does it scale with arcane? Finally, when you level arcane, does its physical damage go up? For weapons like that, we're going to use the heavy, keen, occult soft caps, which actually makes sense because giving any weapon an occult affinity forces it to scale with arcane. And the soft caps here will be at 20, 56, and 80. For quality weapons, we have soft caps at 16, 58, and 80, and that's all for physical damage. Pretty simple. Moving on then to elemental attack power for weapons that do magic, fire, lightning, or holy damage. So when your weapon deals two types of damage, the physical part and the elemental part of the damage will scale differently. So you want to use this curve to figure out where your soft caps are for increasing the elemental portion of your damage, then use the appropriate physical attack power curve, one of the ones we just covered, to figure out the physical part of the damage. For most weapons, the physical part will just be the no infusion soft caps, or the occult one for arcane weapons. Just in case you didn't go watch my other video earlier about weapon scaling, I explain which elements scale with which attributes in that video. And the soft caps for attributes that affect elemental attack power are going to be at 20, 50, and 80. Next is spell power for pure catalysts. First, note that we are no longer talking about attack power, we're talking about spell power how strong the sorceries and incantations you're casting are. The strength of your spells is going to be dependent on a stat called either sorcery scaling for sorceries or incant scaling for incantations, and that stat can be found on the respective catalyst, whether that be a glintstone staff for sorceries or a seal for incantations. When it comes to soft caps and scaling, the sorcery and incant scaling values will both go up by increasing the upgrade level of the catalyst and increasing the stat it scales with, just like a physical weapon would. Reinforce the weapon and it deals more damage, upgrade the stats it scales with and it deals more damage. Same thing here. Now what are pure catalysts? A pure catalyst is one that only scales with one stat, either intelligence or faith. This might be slightly confusing because you'll probably notice that almost every catalyst also scales a little bit with strength. 
That strength scaling only affects the physical damage you deal from like actually hitting something directly with your catalyst, just bonking them on the head. Not how much damage your spells actually do. So when I say a pure catalyst scales with only one stat, I mean it either scales only with intelligence or only with faith. Not both faith and intelligence at the same time, and not with arcane. There are two separate cases for pure catalysts depending on whether they are front-loaded or back-loaded, and that refers to what level range they get their peak scaling at, and thus their peak sorcery or incant scaling value by extension. In simple terms, it just means that some catalysts are more effective at lower levels or early game, while others won't shine until much higher levels. Front-loaded catalysts will scale most between level 20 to 60 with whatever their main stat is, while back-loaded catalysts will scale most between 60 to 80. So here's the spell power scaling for a front-loaded pure catalyst. You have soft caps at 60 and 80. And then moving right on to the back-loaded pure catalyst, you just have a soft cap at 80. Notice that even though there aren't insanely diminished returns from 60 to 80 on a front-loaded catalyst, a backloaded one has increasing returns and will quite literally get more powerful from 60 to 80. So consider switching to a backloaded catalyst if you plan to take either intelligence or faith past level 60. There aren't an insane number of catalysts in the game unlike regular weapons, so I can actually just show you which ones are which. Keep in mind that these are only the pure catalysts. Now there are a couple of special cases marked on here that are kind of weird. For one, the Demi-Human Queen Staff actually has its own scaling curve with soft caps at 20 and 40 intelligence, but obviously that's still front-loaded, so that's why it's there. And then the Prince of Death Staff, technically hybrid since it scales with intelligence and faith, but it uses the pure backloaded curve because it gets most of its scaling at very, very high levels. If you're pushing both of those stats past their soft caps and finding yourself with at least 80 intelligence and 80 faith, then this staff is incredibly strong. But it does take that huge stat investment to shine. Next is the spell power scaling for a hybrid catalyst, aka one that scales with multiple stats, so not just purely intelligence or purely faith. And we have an even shorter list of catalysts here but there are still a couple of weird ones. Notice that the last two, the Claw Mark Seal and Frenzied Flame Seal, are hybrid with Strength or Strength and Dexterity. That means that their spell power actually does scale with those stats. Take the Claw Mark Seal for instance, and say you're running a hybrid Strength Faith build. Chances are, if you're running a Strength Faith build, that you're using a Strength weapon for most of your damage, so you would use one of the Physical Attack Power Charts to figure out your soft caps for that. But then say you wanted to mix in some faith incantations to kind of shake up your playstyle, but you didn't know how many levels to invest in the faith. Here's how you find your answer. Depending on how many levels you have to spare, you could shoot for up to 30 or even 45 and get a lot of value out of your catalyst without a massive stat investment since it's scaling with faith and your main stat strength. And finally, we have the scaling for weapons that inflict poison, bleed, madness, and sleep. This has to do with arcane, so it's kind of weird. Go figure. This only applies to weapons that scale with arcane, whether it's innate scaling or you add arcane scaling later by giving it a blood, poison, or occult affinity. That means that my Uchi Katana I used in the example earlier, despite having innate bleed buildup, would not benefit from these arcane soft caps since it doesn't scale with arcane. Now if I infused it with blood, that would be a different story because then it would still have bleed buildup and it would now scale with arcane. Any weapon that inflicts bleed, poison, madness, or sleep will inflict that no matter what. But if you want to increase the potency of those effects, they scale with arcane. Again, only if the weapon also has arcane scaling built in. I want to make that very clear because if you took something like the Uchi Katana I just mentioned earlier and expected it to get better at inflicting bleed because you cranked your arcane up to 60, you would be very disappointed. And also out 60 levels because the Uchi Katana doesn't naturally scale with arcane. Again. You could change that if you wanted to and give it arcane scaling to make it better at inflicting these status effects, but that's up to you. This is mostly for dedicated arcane builds because essentially you have to invest into arcane up to level 26 before you start getting any noticeable effect, and of course you would want to keep leveling that all the way to 45 for big increases in performance, and that's a heavy stat investment. But it is a very potent effect. Keep in mind that this is only for the status effect buildup on these weapons. With Poison, Bleed, Madness, and Sleep, the damage you deal on any hit will still be physical, and the physical portion of the damage will scale with the first 
no infusion physical attack power graph that I showed earlier. And that's about it. If you're still with me, congratulations, you made it through the complicated stuff. Now let's take a step back and look at this from a big picture perspective. So about hitting all of these soft caps, do you actually need to do that? Well, no. These are just good stopping points, so you don't invest a whole level's worth of runes for very little reward. Actually hitting the soft cap isn't going to do anything special. There's no power bonus at that level. You've just reached the point where going any further will have such diminished returns, it's not really worth leveling that attribute anymore, unless all of your other levels are as high as you want them to be already. So think of soft caps more as a long-term goal, benchmarks that you would hit at the end of a playthrough rather than a level that you're rushing to hit as soon as possible. Instead, to maximize the gains from each level, you should look at which attributes will get you the biggest increase in power if you level it up right now. As an example, let's say you're sitting at 30 vigor and a little over 50 strength. You have enough runes to level up 5 times, so if you put it all into strength, you could hit the strength soft cap. You'd get a little extra damage from doing that, sure, but look at the charts for physical attack power. In that 50 to 60 range, these scaling increases are really starting to fall off. On the other hand, if you put 5 levels into Vigor, going from the 30 to 35 range, those are really big levels. That would get you over 200 HP. So ask yourself when you go to level up, which of those would be more helpful right now. To drive home that other important point that nothing special happens when you hit the soft cap, let's look at the front loaded pure catalyst curve for a second. You get huge power increases all the way to 60, but what if I stopped at 50? Well, the bars are still huge at 50, the same size they were at 40, and the same size that they'll be at 60. Basically, all these graphs are saying is that leveling up where the bars are the tallest is going to be the most bang for your buck. You'll get your money's worth in runes if you're leveling the stat in those ranges. Continuing this example of using a front-loaded tier catalyst, that range where you're in the optimal zone is 40 entire levels. Even at the very beginning of the game, when levels are the cheapest they will ever be, 40 levels is a lot, and that's if you're only increasing intelligence or faith in this example, whichever this hypothetical catalyst scales with. You obviously need to level other things too though. Vigor is super important so you don't get one shot by every boss, you'll want some endurance so you can actually roll a few times and wear the armor you want, and even more relevant to this example, where we're heavily investing into intelligence or faith, you need a ton of mind levels so you actually have the FP to be casting spells. So the point I'm getting at is these soft caps are good to know, yes, but stressing about rushing to them and hitting all these exact levels is definitely not necessary. Instead, just ask yourself what would give you the most benefit each time you level up. If you keep that mentality, each level throughout the entire game is going to feel a lot more impactful. Now as for the late game when levels are very expensive and you might only be able to level up once or twice even after a big boss fight, you probably will want to keep an eye up for those soft caps to make sure you aren't dropping 100,000 runes for no benefit. For that, we can just condense all this information that I've shared with you so far into a general guideline with the important soft caps and make it all a lot less confusing than all the scenarios I showed earlier. If you do want the more or less exact soft caps for every weapon type, here they are feel free to take a screenshot. And this is just all of those charts summarized into text. And you're going to read this using the same process I explained earlier, by first looking at what attributes your weapon of choice scales with, and then under that attribute on this list, find the affinity and damage types that apply to it to know what soft caps you're aiming for. If you're looking to fully optimize and min-max your build, that's the information you need. But for the average person, a wasted level here and there isn't really going to hurt, so let's simplify all this even more. You might have noticed that a lot of these graphs and soft caps for different scenarios look very similar, and that's because they are. So we can really condense this even more into a very general guideline, and a much more simplified version of that cheat sheet, and that would look something like this. As you saw on that last screen I just showed, or if you were maybe just paying really close attention when I went over all the scaling curves earlier, you would notice that for every single weapon in the game, the first soft cap for any of the stats its physical or elemental damage scales with is either at 16, 18, or 20. Chances are you're hitting those levels early in the game since they're so low, and if you go to 20 when you optimally should have stopped at 16 or 18, Whatever, right? We're talking very early game, it probably wasn't a very expensive mistake. But if you're worried about wasting that level or two, you can always just see during the leveling up process how much the attack rating on your weapon is going to increase if you level a certain attribute. So it's easy to check before you commit to the level up. 
And that's kind of the point of this whole video anyway, is me showing you how you can figure out what you should be leveling up instead of just listening to people online tell you what soft caps to hit. But anyway, 20 is a nice general first soft cap for these attributes, but you're probably not stopping at the first soft cap anyway. The second soft cap is extremely minor at either around 56 or 58, and the last soft cap is at 80 for pretty much everything. Now that minor soft cap at 56 or 58 is also really just there to avoid the brief drop off as you approach 60, but it's not an incredibly significant drop off as you saw in all the charts, and of course the scaling gains go back up again at 61. So would it be a huge waste if you went all the way to 60? Not really. A bit of a waste, sure, but if you aren't stressing about being perfectly min-maxed, it's not like a few inefficient levels here and there are going to make or break your build. However, stopping at 55 is a nice generalized soft cap because it'll avoid that brief drop off in extra scaling that happens between 55 and 60, which I'll show you an example of in just a second. And the last thing I want to point out is the reminder at the bottom that all hybrid catalysts have soft caps at 30 and 45 for whatever stat they scale with. Every arcane catalyst in the game just so happens to be hybrid, so I just put the hybrid soft caps with arcane on the screen. But I showed you the list of hybrid catalysts and what they scale with a little earlier if you rewind the video so you can see which ones I'm talking about. If you're using one of those, your soft caps for all the stats that they scale with will be at 30 and 45. But I didn't want to make this entire graphic messier just to accommodate literally four catalysts. As an overall explanation of this simplified cheat sheet though, the biggest difference you'll see is that we're looking at total AR or attack rating, rather than individually looking at physical attack power and elemental attack power. Remember that the attack rating you see in game is the combination of all the damage types and scaling on your weapon, and by condensing all of those different damage types into the total attack rating for your weapon, instead of looking at each damage type and scaling separately like we did before, we get this rough estimate for soft caps, which you might have seen something similar to online before. This is pretty much the general soft cap summary that's been floating around the community for a long time. This is nice because a lot of people might not care exactly how physical and elemental damage are working individually to increase their total AR, they just care that their total AR is going up, or in other words, how they can increase how much damage they're doing, which is totally fair. If I'm doing more damage, that's good enough for me. Obviously, for reasons I spent a lot of this video explaining, these numbers don't tell the full story and you won't get perfectly optimized builds, but they get you really close. For 90 plus percent of players, sticking to these soft caps will produce a perfectly satisfactory build with pretty minimal wasted levels. Now real quickly, I'll run through an example for this version and we'll compare it to the more complicated version I showed earlier so you can see that there's very little difference between the two. Let's take, for instance, the Grafted Dragon, weird weapon. So this weapon scales with Strength, Dexterity, and Faith. So starting with Faith, we see a soft cap at 50, and if we take our Faith all the way up to 50, you can see we keep getting increases in our fire damage, which of course is increasing our total AR. If we looked at the more detailed version of the soft caps that I just showed a moment ago, this actually lines up. Elemental attack power, in this case it happens to be fire damage, has a soft cap at 50. However, when we start leveling our strength and dexterity, the detailed version shows the real soft caps at 58, while the simplified version says to stop at 55. So if I take both of these stats to 55, we get 181 damage from scaling. Now if we actually pushed those stats to the soft cap and made them both 58 instead of 55 to squeeze as much damage out as we can, we only get 7 more damage out of 6 likely very expensive levels. So again, do you really need to push every stat to the soft cap? Definitely not. Just try not to go too far past them and learn to recognize which stats are worth leveling at different points in the game. Instead of 6 levels in strength and dexterity for only 7 more damage, you could put 6 levels into vigor for instance and potentially really improve your survivability. To further my point even more that there are better ways to spend your runes than trying to force yourself to the soft caps, let me also show you how many runes those levels might cost. If I make a build planner, set it to samurai again, it doesn't really matter but let's just put those stats in. We have 55 strength, 55 dexterity, 50 faith, and realistically if we're this high of a level, I'm going to say I'm at least at 40 vigor and let's say 20 endurance. That puts me at a hypothetical level of 169. Nice, I didn't plan that. Okay, so if we spend 6 more levels to get strength and dexterity both to 58, how much would that cost? 
On the wiki, you can find a table showing the rune cost for each level, the increase in cost from the previous level, and the total number of runes it takes to reach that level from level 1. So if we're at 169, 6 more levels would put us at a total level of 175. If we compare the total runes spent at 169 to 175, you'll see it takes 10.4 million runes to get to 169, versus 11.7 million runes to get to 175. That's a little under 1.3 million runes you spent on those 6 levels, just to do 7 more damage. This is just a random example, hardly an optimized build, and a very weird weapon, but you get the point I'm trying to make. That's about it though, I hope that cleared up some confusion about the stats in this game, and between this and the weapons video that I made, you feel pretty good about building your character. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.